Le'Veon Bell, and he joins us here on the K Show. Don LeGrec and Bob Wachusen, how are you, buddy? I'm doing good. How are you? Good. Very good, man. We're just excited to see you. You know, the, the fans really wanted you all offseason. I don't know if you got a sense of that. And we joked with you at the Super Bowl in Minneapolis. We kind of mocked, you know, making the, uh, the contract negotiations. But this just seemed to be, I don't know if you thought about it, but a, a destination that you were going to end up here. Did you feel that, that fate just had you eventually being here in New York? Um, honestly, yes. You know, I mean, um, it's actually a funny story because growing up, um, I was a New York Jet fan, mm. you know, so um, just to have the opportunity when I was in free agency, it kind of like kind of led towards that in a way. Um, you know, everything else kind of fell in place, too, to kind of help everything happen. But it just felt so right, you know, so everything fell in place and I'm, ha I'm, ha I'm so happy here. I'm here. Yeah, and people want to heat here because you can make the case, Bob, jump in if I'm wrong, but when you look at just pure skill set, you have the potential to be one of the great Jets of all time, Re really, when you think about it, because you come in as arguably, if not the best running back in football. I mean, this is something that the Jets really haven't had. They've had Curtis Martin. They've had Joe Namath. When you look at the ability to catch, to be able to block, to be able to run, I mean, the fans are just really excited to just put all this skill set together. Yeah, I'm so I'm, I'm so happy to, um, you know, be, be here and be able to give people hope. You know, um, you know, I think we got a great offense. You know, I think I'm going to fit in mm -hmm. um, perfect. You know, I think... Uh, you know, we got a great quarterback, a, a good offensive line that's um, working together and starting to jail. And um, Coach Gacy is like a mastermind on offense, you know. So I think he's going to put me, put us in a lot of good situations to allow me to make plays and showcase my talent. And, um, you know, and I think this offense can be really explosive. I just want to make sure it's okay for you to be up here. Because, like, when you leave practice for three minutes, it's like a mushroom cloud on I know, social right? media. I know, right? Are you okay? Time. I'm okay. It's I'm all right okay. being up here? Yeah, I all think right. so, right? Just want to make sure. <laughs> I'm checking Twitter to make sure everybody right. knows where you are. Um, <laughs> Knowing where you are physically, mm -hmm. I think, is one of the most interesting things about this training camp. Because taking a whole year off, not doing football, mm -hmm. you train. I know you kept in. You could, we could see yeah. you're the Le'Veon Bell that athletically you were before you took a year off. Mm -hmm. But how about just football-wise? Man, it's like, it's so hard to describe because when you, you can do all the training and things that you want. But it's so different when you actually get out there and play football. You know, you can never really be in football shape unless you're playing football. You know, so um, the first couple of days, obviously I went out there, did the conditioning test. Um, I did it twice. I did it with two groups. Um, you know, I felt good. Um, but it's like soon we start playing football, it's like, oh, I start cramping a little bit. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, things this way or that way just because I haven't been in that flow, you know, in over a year, you know. And um, really two years uh three years since training camp because I didn't go to training camps um, in Pittsburgh, you know, so um, this is really my first training camp, you know, in three years, two years. So, Do you, do you want to play in the preseason games? Um, do you want to get on the field? Because, like, if you were Le'Veon Bell, Pittsburgh, I wouldn't put you anywhere near the field right. in preseason games. You know, I mean, like, Damian Tomlinson went, like, eight years never taking a snap in a preseason game. That valuable player, that much tread off the tire. How many times do I want you to get hit? Do, but with the year off, do you want to play in the preseason games? I mean, honestly, um, you know, whatever Coach Gates is up to, uh, up for, you know, if he wants to play me in a couple uh, games, I, or a, a couple series or plays or whatever, I'm open to it. If he doesn't, I'm, I'm could, be, could be open to it too. Because mm -hmm. just get the fact that I know he's going to protect me for myself, you know, but at the same time, you know, it might be okay to get in there, get tackled once, right. you know, but. Um, you know, just to get ready for the for the regular thing, and um, you know, just get get to get everything off of you. Just get tackled, and get up. Like, ooh, I, I ain't felt that in a little minute. <laughs> yeah, you know, so right. Yeah, that's um, what I was curious about because you haven't been hit in anger since what January of 2018, right? right? I mean, we do a little thudding in practice, but it's not like somebody wrapping you up, two right. people, three people jumping on you like it's a pile. Like, you know, so um, nobody yeah. nobody's hitting you more than thud in practice. <laughs> They're gonna hear about it if they right, do. Right, I guarantee right. that. I You're probably as close to wearing a red jersey out there as you can be. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know that. That's, that's true. So, that's so funny because Jamal said the same thing. He said oh, there's no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. You know, there's so much optimism around this team. The one area is that that beast of the start of the schedule. I mean, as a player, do you look at those first six games and go, wow, that, that's a hurdle? Or are you just literally just taking it one game at a time? It's Buffalo and there's nothing else. Yeah, honestly, me personally, I want to take it one game at a time because that's all we really can do um, is focus on, you know, one opponent. Um, you know, even like right now, I'm not even necessarily worried about the preseason games because I'm just worried about, all right, I got to perfect my craft and, you know, learn all the plays, make sure I'm not thinking too much when I'm out there, make sure mm -hmm. everything is, I'm playing football. 
so I can play fast, I don't got to think, and I can be myself. You know, that's my first step. Um, then, you know, when we start getting to game planning things for, you know, if I play in the preseason or the first regular season game when I play, uh, when we start game planning things, I think that's when that mindset got to go like, okay, we got to worry about this game, you mm -hmm. know. But I just try to take it step by step. I don't necessarily worry about, you know, six weeks down the line and things like that because you can't control, you know, that far down the line. Your dumb question. There's really no way to answer this, I guess, hypothetical, but <laughs> what do you think you did for the long term in your career, even if it was inadvertent, by sitting out last year? I, I wonder if there was, if you took 50 football players and had them all sit out for a year mm -hmm. and then compared and contrasted the ends of their careers with guys who were the same age, same number of reps, same role on their team, same position. Like, do you think maybe you might play two or three years longer than you may have just because you had a maintenance year, even if it wasn't what that's, you probably would have wanted to have had happen in the middle of your career? Yes, that's literally how I feel. Because it's like, usually, so I've been playing football, you know, literally like 20 years. I've been playing since like four or five years old, right? So every year you play football. And then you have off season, or you play basketball. Like using you younger, you basketball track, you football, right? You know what I'm saying? So it's like football. You you recover a little bit, but you still got nicks and keep, you know little bumps and bruises from the prior season that don't fully heal. They might 95% heal, you know. And then that's resets, resets, and over the course of your career, you know, your shoulder or maybe your knee or whatever it is, your ankle, your toe, you just kind of get used to it hurting. So you're mm -hmm. just playing with it hurting, and you're used to it hurting. You cumulative know what I'm effect. Yeah, it's a cumulative yep. effect. Literally, when I took this whole year off, um, this, that past year, and I came back this year, and I've been training and everything, I literally can't remember well what was hurting when I was in Pittsburgh. I can't remember, like, you know, on my shoulder, like, you know what I'm saying, or my elbow. Because I remember you always have a wrist or, like, a thumb or something. It would always be something um, just because you play running back. It's a brutal sport. Um, but I literally can't remember what aches I had, you know, because I feel so good. You know, I haven't been hitting so long. So um, I'm, I'm excited, you know, for my for myself and to see how, how my longevity, how it's going how it's gonna to take. And I'm sure, you know, the guys behind me are going to watch and, um, you know, use it. Levy, I'm Bell here on the Michael K. Show. Before I let you go, you just mentioned the whole mi missing the whole year, right? And you know how it is with fans. That always comes across as a negative. You know, million-dollar athlete holding out. Uh, does, it, does that perception bother you that you feel like you've got to rehabilitate your image because you sat out an entire year? Um, it, it only bothers me just because I feel like um, some people don't understand mm -hmm. um, where I'm coming from. You know, that's the only reason why it may bother me. I, everybody's going to have their opinion and feel the way they feel. Um, and they're, you know, they're rightful, rightfully so they're allowed to. Um, but at the same time, I made a decision, um, you know, because of how I felt and what I felt was right for me. You know, and um, some people may not agree with it, some people may. But the only reason why it may bother me just because some people don't really understand what I was doing. Well, and um, that's what it is. Let me just tell you, I, Bob and I have been in this market forever, been around this team forever. 16 years I did pre and post for this team. And I know you've been a little defensive on Twitter and Instagram. Don't be. I mean, the... The fans want you here. New York wants you here. And the people that get it are going to get you. Right. So that's the one thing I might, if you, you needed any advice about New York is don't let the eggs bother you. I call them the eggs, the ones that don't even bother putting the profile picture up on their Twitter. Right, right. right. I, mean, I know the fans. We talk to the fans on this show. They love you. They want you here. And that's all you need to really care about. Man, I appreciate that. Because I, I love you. I love being here, too, man. I feel like everybody's been welcoming me with open arms here, you know. So um, I'm excited, you know, and um, I'm going to make sure, you know, I'm giving back my whole effort and everything I can. All right, buddy. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. Good luck, all right? Yes, sir. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. Appreciate it.